All right, I'm going to teach you right now how to do a critique of an essay. We're going to go through this mom essay. First, I'm going to mark everything that I think of, uh, corrections, editing on the essay itself. And then at the end of the essay, I'm going to write out a critique of the ideas of what I liked and uh, what I would like to see improved upon in this essay. So let's just go ahead and get started going through it. It says, like all moms, my mom comes home and takes care of me. All right, I like that nice opening there, like all moms. They probably should have a comma right there. You put punctuation, circle it. My mom comes home and takes care of me, period. Oh, now we have a sentence that starts with and, and still goes to work full time. This is a fragment, so I'm gonna write frag right there. And how could I fix that? I could get rid of that period and make that a lowercase. When you put a slash through a capital letter, that means make it a lowercase. So now this sentence sounds really good for background. Like all moms, my mom comes home and takes care of me and still goes to work full time. Not sure if that's true. Not all moms go to work and then come home and take care of their kids. So that might be a little weird to say that as a generalization at the beginning of the essay. Let's see the next sentence here. My mom is a very hardworking person. Nice thesis statement. It's very clear. Uh, not, not, I mean, it could be better. There could be some more rich vocabulary in there. It could be uh, a little more creatively written, but uh, very straight to the point and uh, done nicely there. Here are some reasons why. Got a plan coming up next. That's perfect. And then an indent, nice intro paragraph there. And we're moving on to the first body paragraph. Let's see if the author here uh, supports the thesis that their mom is hardworking in their body paragraphs. My mom is going to college to fulfill her dream. Her dream is to become a nurse. She's always has this dream because she loves helping people. Well, from right here all the way down to here, that's one sentence. That's a run-on sentence. I don't know if you could hear it as I was reading that, but her dream is to become a nurse. That's the end of that sentence. And then we start a new one. She always has had this dream because she loves helping people. We don't want that S on the end there. Just she always has had this dream. Then it sounds good. And we'll keep going. She tries to take as many courses at that she can handle Tuesdays and Thursdays. She goes to school from 5 to 8 and takes one online class. Whoo! Okay, no room to breathe in there. That's a run on. We've got some problems there. We'll try to fix it. She tries to take as many courses, I would say, as she can handle. And then that would be on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Good. Capitalizing the days of the week. We need a period at the end of that because that's a sentence. She tries to take as many courses as she can on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Bam. Sentence over. She, capital S, Put three lines under letters that you want to be capitalized. She goes to school from five to eight. Hmm, I think this should actually be written more like five. She means 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Hopefully you'll write neater than I do because I'm using a tablet here. And takes one online class. All right, other than that, looks look, looking good. Now, let's think about it. Does this support the idea that the mom's hardworking? She's going to college. Uh, she has this dream. She's going to become a nurse. She's going to school Tuesdays and Thursdays. Plus, she's a mom. Wow, that sounds like a pretty hardworking mom to me. Okay, then she indents here. A little bit big of an indent. You usually just want to indent to about right there, but that's okay. My mom is still going to work while she's going to college. Uh, my mom... Uh, works. How about my mom is still working? I think might sound better there. My mom is still working while she's going to college. All right, next sentence says 10 hours a day. Let's go to the next page here Monday through Friday, which is full time. Hmm, that's not really a sentence. We need to have some sort of subject and predicate at the beginning of that. I'm going to draw a little arrow there. We need to say she works. She works 10 hours a day, Monday through Friday, which is full. Okay, let's put a comma there. We have an appositive at the very end of the sentence, which is full time. 
And then I'm going to put the period out here just to make sure that we know we sp we're supposed to have a period at the end of that. It is down here, but I want to make it real clear. All right, this does not look like a capital, so I'm going to put three letters there. She handles all the people that don't know how to speak English. This word is misspelled. I'm always going to write the correct spelling above the word that I circle. Uh, and everything else looks good. Oh, English, that's a language named after a country of England, and so we have to capitalize the first letter of that word. That's a proper noun. All right, so she's working full-time. Now, one thing I would like to see in here is she never tells me what her job is. So I'm going to put a little note to myself so that when I do my critique at the end, I'll remember to talk about that. She still comes home to take care of me. All right, uh, there we go. Okay, period. That doesn't look like a capital. She always tries to be the best and is the most hardworking mom. Uh, this is kind of, that's what we had earlier in the hard working. That's the thesis statement. So that's kind of redundant, kind of repeating the thesis statement there. And I would, I don't know about this, and is the most hard working. How about it? and is the hardest working mom. She also still comes home and helps me. Oh, you just said still comes home right here. Again, that's pretty redundant. Uh, why don't we just say that she helps me with my homework if I need help. We don't need to repeat the coming home part. All right, and then the ending says my mom is the most hardworking, is the hardest working person in the world. Wow. Need an exclamation point on that. She also is the best mom ever. Okay, there's quite some hyperbole going on there at the end, but that's okay. It's her mom. You've got to talk, say great things about your own mom, of course. So now at the end, uh, I'm going to have a spot to critique that. And let's go ahead and I'm going to type this so that you guys can read a little bit better. And probably... Let's go maybe half that size. Hopefully that'll be good enough for you to read. All right, I'm going to say uh, I enjoyed author's essay on... I know it's a girl, so I'm going to say her mom. Uh, let's see. She has a strong thesis statement that is supported by her body paragraphs. Okay, um, I would like to have less uh, redundancy in her paper. She keeps repeating the idea that her mom is hard working. Now, I don't know if she put a hyphen in that. I should probably go back. I just realized that uh, I'm switch back to my pen. When you say hard working or hardest working, that would be hyphenated. Hardest working. Uh, let's go back here. Oh, she's got hard working as one word right there. You know what, I should probably use my, let's go to Google, look this up, and, uh, a pop. hard, oh, hard working. All right, oh, I see it is uh, one, one word right there, hard working, definition of hard working, hard working. So it looks like hard working is one word so she was right right there so we're not going to put a hyphen in there glad I looked that up so you want to use your computer for this kind of stuff so I don't know if hardest working would be one word though that would be kind of weird um, she is you know what I think I'm gonna go back to what her idea was and she's the most hard working so that means these need to be kind of joined together there I'm gonna stick with hard uh, I'm gonna use my eraser on there actually Go back to my eraser. You can't do that if you use pen. But uh, there we go. Might have to rewrite it again. A little tricky on here. I am going to join those together. That's what those little lines mean like that. Like sideways parentheses is when I want to join it together. 
All right, let's keep going on this. Oh, it's going to make me start some new typing here. And I would fix that hardworking hyphen in there. I'd get rid of that hyphen. So let's see. The author, I'm not going to talk about specific things that I marked on the paper. However, I'm going to say the author is a good speller. In fact, she spelled something I didn't spell right. Um, but really needs to work on her sentences. There are too many run-ons and fragments. Okay, what else did I notice about this paper that I liked or I didn't like? Um, I enjoyed the conclusion as she used hyperbole to describe her mom. Okay, um, the opening sentence uh, is, uh, let's see, grabbed my attention. It was a good way to start off the paper. However, uh, 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 I'm not really sure that she can say that all moms work and then come home to uh, take care of their kids. So that's, uh, that's, that's not very accurate. All right, now let me go back up, and I've got just a couple minutes left here. Let me go back and see what else is kind of redundant. Uh, in the, that's like the fourth paragraph. Oh, yeah, i got to mention something about her, uh, the job. Okay, so here we go again. Mm, oh, let's move it over to here. All right, um, in her third paragraph, the author mentions her mom working so many hours, but never tells what her current job is. I wanted to hear that. Okay, one last thing is I also would suggest the author mix up the sentence structure. Just about every sentence uh, begins with she or with my mom. Gets kind of boring and redundant after a while. Uh, lastly, I think it would be awesome if the author whoops, worked on developing some more, some better use of rich vocabulary. Not, not too many you know, super intelligent type words in that essay. So that's it. You can see I wrote a lot. I didn't just write a few things here. I went through the paper carefully, uh, double checking things. I'm always going back to it and coming up with a great critique to turn into my teacher and to show my good critical thinking skills.